So as you just heard, uh, and you'll see why I gave it this ridiculous title when we get going. So as you heard, when I was 12, I convinced my parents to let me drop out of school and homeschool myself. This is me back in the day using all the latest technology. About a month later, created MuggleNet, number one Harry Potter site. Learned a ton through that experience. Learned a little bit of everything. How to code, how to write, how to edit, how to lead. I also deal with things like hackers, blackmail, groupies, mutinies. We used to go on tour, live like rock stars. It was wild. We had like a best, we had like a number one podcast in the world, a New York Times best-selling book. Learned so much. So my parents pretty much stayed out of my way and let me study whatever I wanted. One exception. Had to read four short biographies every single day. Imagine what happens to your brain when you're 12 years old and that's how you're spending your time. 10,000 pieces. It's like, okay, I decided I wanted to change the world. And so I began studying patterns of influence. Fast forward. Decided to go to college. Got bored quickly, predictably. Not a good reason to go to college for fun. And I was going to drop out and start another business. But um, before I did, the first one went well. So I wanted to go really big with the next one. I wanted to identify a model that would maximize my probability of getting to a billion by the time I was 30. The odds were not high, but set off on an intellectual journey. Set a goal of reading one nonfiction book every single day. Business, politics, psychology, economics, technology, science. And then built out different systems to maximize my ability to retain the information and apply the information. Because learning how to learn is literally the most important thing you can ever learn. It's like wishing for more witches. And now that I have a quick tip, nothing to do with anything, everyone needs to know this. this. If you do this, I read twice as fast when I do this, I think you will too. Whenever you read, put in headphones with white noise. Because when you're reading all the time, we're bad readers, we sit there and we get distracted. Like, what was that? Was that a threat? Not a threat? Where was I? Like, chair squeaking, dog barking, we just reread the same stuff over and over and over again because it takes you 40 seconds to figure out where you left off every single time. So just put in headphones with white noise, read twice as fast, change your life. Okay, moving on. Um, so anyway, I started to get interested in different things. One of the things I interested in besides speed reading was virality. Because to me, the ability to make things viral was like having a superpower. I, I really was curves like this. I got so obsessed with nonlinear growth curves like this. This is by the history of everything. Look at all the dots. Look at how much stuff we've done recently. Isn't that cool? Okay, so <laughs> with virality, um, I was like, you could overthrow dictators, start movements, revolutionize industries, tip elections. That one got really interesting recently, didn't it? Um, so then, uh, things happened. Uh, a lot of things happened. Started a company, company did very well. Um, made a lot of like viral, so we basically had like tens of millions of followers, Facebook, Twitter. Um, we had like some of the biggest meme sites online, like funny iPhone autocorrects, you know, all kinds of stuff like that. You know, billions and billions of page views. Um, and I was having a ball. But what I wanna do is I wanna talk now about like more about how that led into studying some other things I'm super, super interested in talking more about. So we're right there, big deal. Things are changing really fast, like really, 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 really fast. And we don't spend enough time talking or thinking about how fast that change is actually happening. Uh, I love this quote here. We're still in the first minutes of the first day of the internet revolution. What does that mean? So right now, when it comes to virality, the thing that always got me really excited about virality was like, okay, you don't see anything, nothing, 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 then overnight, everything changes, right? Like a tsunami, right? How do tsunamis work? Well, a tsunami is something where it's like, you see this tiny little wave of energy. It's a wave that's like three, a three inch high wave. It goes for thousands of miles. Then all of a sudden, it just gobbles up the whole city, right? Well, that's really terrifying, but also exciting because there's things that are like, I like progress tsunamis, right? We, all this thing, all this change happens, but it happens really, really fast. Um, and you can pause it too. Like this, this is what I call like a progress tsunami. Like Shanghai, 23 years ago, farmland, cows, not very interesting, right? And then all of a sudden, boom, big cities, right? I think that's exciting. User generated video, another one of those things, progress tsunami, nothing, nothing, nothing. Tons of user generated video. We all got our phones, our phones taking videos of stuff now. That's amazing. The amount of movies being created is going viral, is, being, is growing exponentially, right? That's crazy. The amount of things that are connected to the internet, growing exponentially. The amount of songs being created, growing exponentially. The amount of drones being created, drones are amazing, get stuff shipped right away, go anywhere, anytime, exponentially. The amount of words, I don't even know why, but like linguistic innovation, super cool, right? <laughs> super cool. Um, online courses, huge implications here for online education and for traditional education. What does this mean, the, the amount of online courses growing exponentially? The amount of planets. We're literally discussing, look at how many planets we figured and found in 2014. The curve in 2016 is even bigger. Think about what we're going to figure out when we've like 100x how many planets we've discovered. The universe is so unexplored. That's amazing. The amount of books. Books. The amount of books being created is growing exponentially. <laughs> Just think of that for a second. Like, who would have, I wouldn't even predict that. Amazon is amazing. That's all Kindle. Um, not really. Okay, the amount of startups being created. Everyone wants to do a startup, right? The amount of startups, cool. You can see it in the numbers. That's a lot of innovation. That's very exciting for the future of our species. The amount of knowledge being created. This shows how many Wikipedia articles we're creating. Tons and tons and tons of knowledge that we're categorizing. The amount of collaboration. This shows how many authors there are per scientific paper. Also another very exciting. I use word exciting too much. I apologize in advance for that, but just like, it's hard. I'm just, there's so much to be excited about. The amount of TV shows being created, growing exponentially. The amount of apps being created, the amount of app downloads, all these things is exploding. The amount of scientific studies. Look at how little we knew back in 1966. We knew nothing. We were publishing like no studies at all. And then all of a sudden, boom, science. I think that's amazing. Okay, now, okay, before we do this, I want to stop in the slide for like, I'm going to like, okay. What basically this shows right here. Oh, I have a laser pointer. Right? Okay, laser pointer right there. Eight, 100 years ago, 90% of people were stuck in absolute poverty in the world. 
90% of the world was living on less than $2 a day. 100 years later, 10%. Translation, we are on the verge of eliminating absolute poverty. All the doom and gloom of the papers, people love to be cynical about the future. Are you kidding me? Look at this. 90% reduction in global poverty. I mean, like, I'm going to pause awkwardly for a second so you can all just ponder the amazing and beautiful significance of this. It's very hard for me to pause. Very hard. That was really meaningful. Okay. <laughs> Literacy, same thing. Literacy, look at that. No one could read shit back in 1900. <laughs> look at this. Almost gone. Almost everyone can read now. Not necessarily well, but at least can read. <laughs> big, big, big deal. Child labor. <sighs> Global child mortality rates. Infants used to die. Look at that. Look at that. 40% of kids used to die. Isn't that even worse than that? 100 years ago. 40% of kids would die before age five, like half, right? Just think of that for a second. Boom, almost nothing now. Teen births. <laughs> Homicide rates. We love to talk, oh, like Chicago, everyone dies. I mean, there's definitely like real, real problems here, but look at this. We used to kill the shit out of each other for all of human history. <laughs> look at this. Now look now. Nothing, nothing. Okay, so uh, other awesome things. Violent crime rate. It seems, oh, crime's so bad. Nope, on its way down. The amount of people living in, in uh, democratic countries, look at this, exploding, exploding democracy, hooray. All right, I wanna talk for a while more about self-driving cars, because self-driving cars are a thing of great beauty and we don't spend enough time talking about the implications of self-driving cars. Basically, um, okay, so there's lots of different reports. The, the, the biggest promise of self-driving cars is that the accident reduction rate is going to be massive. There's a lot of estimates of what it is, but most people are somewhere between 50 and 99.9% .9 reduction in accident rate. A uh, really famous study by McKinsey predicted 90% elimination uh, rate of accidents. This is a monumentally big deal because if this happens, and it very likely will, this is the equivalent of preventing a 9-11 every year. Every year. And by the way, self-driving cars, look, this is how many self-driving cars are being shipped. Explosion. Tesla's right about to release the Model 3, 35,000. Look at this. These are real, okay, what I'm gonna do now is I'm actually just talking, these are actual headlines. Uh, they seem like they're from the future, but they're not. So all I'm gonna do is like transfer how excited I'm about those headlines to you so we can just stop and think about how fast things are changing and how little time we spent actually pondering the significance of these things. So first right here, self-driving cars. Uber already has self-driving trucks on the road. Uber self-driving truck packed with Budweiser makes its first delivery in Colorado. It's, they're already making deliveries with self-driving cars. Tesla's autopilot is probably having asked by 50% based on early data. Amazing, think of that. Like That's like half a 911 every year already of ever just switched to Tesla. With early, and this technology is gonna get much, much better too. Uh, Elon Musk predicts his, uh, his drops his prediction of full-time is driving from three years to just two. Not 30 years to two years, three years to two years. This is happening like that. AI control, this isn't really self-driving cars, but it's cool. AI control traffic lights in Pittsburgh, 25 faster travel times, 21% fewer emissions. 25% faster travel times just by fix, making the AI, the lights smarter. Think about the course of the rest of your life. Every time you're driving, you get there 25% faster. That would like add months of time, if not years of time onto your life. Uber 911, in New York City, the median response time for an ambulance is six minutes. The median wait time for an Uber is 2.4 minutes. It takes less time to get an Uber than to get an ambulance. <laughs> Now think about, imagine how many people die because the ambulance took three more minutes to get there. How many more lives will be saved as we like do better stuff like this? All right, first person to unlock the iPhone built a self-driving car with $1,000 in computer parts. $1,000 computer parts, he built a self-driving car. They're here right now. Japan's levitating train travels three miles per hour and just carried its first passengers. This is like a jet plane, this is like a jet train. It goes like the speed of jets, but it's a train. Again, get there fast. Robotic expert predicts kids born today will never drive a car. Well, the reason why is like, it seems crazy. Like I would never let, yeah, you will. You know why? Because if the accident rate goes down 90%, no one's gonna let you drive a car on public roads. No, just like you're not allowed to drive drunk, not allowed to drive texting. You're not gonna be allowed to drive a car when the computers are doing it nine times better than you. It's not gonna happen. All right, implications of these things. So big deals, right? So like auto and life insurance, right? What happens when, if the accident reduction rate goes down 90%, what happens to auto insurance companies? You don't really need that much auto insurance anymore, right? Because cars aren't really crashing. Life insurance, people aren't dying. That's a good thing. Not really if you work in life insurance though. Auto body shops, again, like cars aren't crashing. It sucks for them, good for us. Trucking delivery, again, like, I mean, three million truck drivers on the road. Um, that's a lot of jobs, like that. Pizza, pizza delivery, courier services, you name it. Like a lot of jobs go up in smoke, that's kind of scary, but at the same time, it's still good for all of us. Hotels, we don't have to drive, we don't have to like design cars with people going like this all the time. So what we can do is we can design cars that are like little mini hotel rooms, right? Which means that you don't have to necessarily stay in a hotel. You can just have your car drive, you can chill out, you can do other things, right? Same with planes, buses, and trains. If, why take a plane or a bus or a train if you can have your car just take you and you can just sleep and chill and like watch Netflix and stuff from the car, right? 
Um, radio and podcast. This is interesting. We spend 46 minutes a day in our car. Basically, 46 minutes where we can't look at screens. This means that for 46 minutes a day, we have to listen to stuff. But like, what happens when you can actually watch stuff? Well, do you want to listen to stuff and you can watch stuff and listen to stuff? Most people don't, right? So most people don't just sit at home and listen to the radio. So that'll be interesting. Healthcare. That's a lot of people not dying and not getting their limbs, you know, cut off. So that's a lot of people that are not going to the healthcare system. I heard an estimate of 500 billion dollars that could impact. Organ donations. People aren't dying. One fifth of all organ donations come from people dying in car crashes. Also an interesting problem to solve. Great problem to have though. Great problem. All right, other things, um, VR and AR, exploding, like exploding right now. We need to talk more about this. You have to think not like VR is this cute, clunky thing right now. You have to think when VR is like 99% as accurate as like, because I mean, haptic suits, things like that, not just not, not all engaging all the senses, right? So think VR that's 99% as accurate as real life, which is not that far away. That'll definitely happen in our lifetimes. Implications, by the way, I make a lot of really bold, audacious claims, as you've noticed, because um, these are what I feel, but obviously you know that I'm making shit up. <laughs> all right, real estate. Um, real estate. So, like, real estate. Most people, like, real estate agents are using, um, think like, oh, you can sample things. No, you have to think, like, if we're spending the majority of the time inside virtual reality, which, again, if you can create any reality you want inside virtual reality, and it's basically free or very low cost, uh, why not just have a virtual mansion for way less money than a real mansion for a lot of money? <laughs> not saying it'll happen, but it could. All right, live events. Like, why, tra why spend all the time traveling like, an entire day, hours and hours and hours, hot, sweaty, all the things you just go to the concert lot, you know, and it'll feel really similar. Sporting events, similar. Like travel, business travel, like why spend a half a day traveling somewhere for a face-to-face -face meeting if you can get 99% of the same thing without having to travel at all? It takes a long time to get to New York. Uh, not that I do that very often. Uh, tourism. Again, like yeah, it's better to be there, but like I think tourism become like a super rich person thing because if you can do it for a tiny fraction of the cost without having to spend an entire day you know, flying to Australia, you will. People will travel a lot more, but it'll be virtual travel. Again, shipping and transportation, things that are atoms, not bits. Like you don't have to like ship stuff, but you can experience things digitally. This is already happening all different aspects of our life. We don't have as many physical things. We have a lot of digital things now. Gaming, obviously. Let me talk about that. Sex work. This one's also really interesting. The porn implications are obviously uh, pretty significant, but also they want prostitution. All of a sudden, that's a whole industry that just gets super screwed by virtual reality because the dangerousness and grossness of that, uh, you don't need to because VR is awesome. I mean, for other people. Um, solar. Okay, another big thing I want to talk about. This is really important. Solar just hit a major milestone in 2016. Solar is now cheaper than coal. So all like the whole like you know tree hugging grassroots save the world kind of stuff doesn't even we don't even need to do that anymore because solar is cheaper than coal. So economically now solar just makes all the sense in the world and there's all kinds of so like this is what happened right. Solar is going to keep getting cheaper. Coal is going to keep getting more expensive and look what's happening <laughs> off the charts. And this is when solar was still more expensive in many areas than coal. So this is what's happening. Look at this. Las Vegas is now drawing 100% of its power from renewables. Renewables just passed coal as the largest source of new electricity worldwide. Again, no mandates needed, no tree hugging, just like straight economics. And that's not gonna go back because solar is getting cheaper and cheaper because it's, it's software. Tesla's solar roof to cost less than a regular roof. Tesla's these roof, they look just like regular roofs. You have to have ugly solar panels on your roof. Um, they already cost, they're already gonna cost less than a regular roof. And that doesn't even factor in energy savings from actually having the ability to generate power yourself and then potentially sell it back. And then look at this one. At least six major countries, including Canada, France, Germany, Netherlands, Australia, and now Finland, all recently announced the imminent phase out of all coal power plants. This again, this isn't like, this isn't, you know, tree hugging, like we're gonna do this. This is like, it just economically, it doesn't make sense. France, 2023, they're gonna shut down their coal power plants. All this talk about like, oh, we need to go build more coal. Are you kidding me? They're shutting down their power plants because they're not even much less like building new ones, right? Interesting implications there. Uh, solar powered pipe desalinates 1.5 billion gallons of drinking water year for California. Another one thing, like, as the price of energy comes crashing down, desalinization, one of those things, and now like the idea of like taking salt water, turning to fresh water, water shortages suddenly now become much less problematic. Okay, other headlines in the future that I just think are amazing. So, man lives 55 days with no heart in his body while thriving on a heart machine he carried in a backpack. He carried his heart in a backpack and lived for a year and a half. I didn't say more about it, do it. Three men had their hands amputated and replaced by prosthetic hands they control with their minds. Again, what else could I possibly say? That almost sounds like the fakest thing I've ever heard, right? Male hormone reverses cell aging in clinical trial. Human radiologists missed 7% of cancers in a study. A deep learning algorithm missed zero. Okay, human radiologists, 7%. That's, that's not bad, right? Humans, yay. But like, think of all the people who died because of this. That's a lot of cancers to miss, right? So, you know, hooray for deep learning algorithms. FDA approved exoskeleton allows paralyzed people to walk. Researchers find missing link between the brain and immune system. Basically, mind over matter. For the first time ever, we found a scientific, like biochemical link between the brain and the immune system. That's amazing, we don't have time for that, but that's fine. Uh, skin gun, burn helps victims quickly regrow skin by spraying them with their own stem cells. Skin gun. Canadian doctors just reverse severe MS using stem cells. The real life bat suit, super flex suit, includes exoskeleton to give wearers superhuman strength. 
Biohackers figured out how to inject your eyeballs with night vision. Real stuff happening right now, like not made up. Two students created a device that uses sound waves to extinguish fires. A sound gun to extinguish fires. We don't need water anymore. Huge implications for all kinds of things. Lab-grown meat, 30,000 times cheaper than 18 months ago. If you've heard of this, lab-grown meat. We make meat in a lab. We don't have to like grow tons and tons of stuff to slaughter them and kill them. Way better for the environment, way less you know, misery and stuff. And the cost is plummeting. And in our lifetimes, I think it's very likely that we'll be eating mostly lab-grown meat. It seems gross and like, who, who would do that? But it's chemically identical. And if it's like 100th the cost, and you know, we will. Like these are the kind of things. Like people say, like, I would never do that, but then they do. Um, <laughs> NASA plans mission to a metal-rich asteroid worth quadrillions. Asteroids. We're mining asteroids now. Scientists can now make lithium line batteries last a lifetime. Again, what can I say? Uh, two of them just remembered. So, like, one, more people watch the League of Legends World Championship than the NBA Finals and the World Series. League of Legends is like a video game. It's like an eSport, right? Video game sports. That's just amazing. Video games are like the future of sports. Growing exponentially, sports are not. Uh, another one I think is interesting. So, Elon Musk said that the odds that we're not living in a computer simulation are billions to one. In other words, he is 99.9999999% sure that we're living right now in a computer simulation, almost like a game. Maybe that's true, maybe it's not, but I think it's one of those theories. I guarantee you're start hearing way more about that theory because there's actually a lot of really interesting evidence for it. All right. Paralyzed man regains use of arms and hands after experimental stem cell therapy. A man suffered a heart clot at the wheel and his Tesla drove him to the hospital. His car drove him to the hospital. First home brain input lets locked in women play games. She plays games with her mind. She's, she's like a vegetable. She can't do anything, right? She can now play games in her mind. Think how much how her life sucked and how much better it is, right? Now imagine lots of people doing that. It's amazing. Uh, cornea cells successfully grown and implanted to cure blindness. An AI system read breast x-rays 30 times faster than doctors with 20% greater accuracy. 20% greater accuracy. Think how many people die of breast cancer because they missed it and they won't in the future because AI is awesome. Stanford announces the, uh, it has found a way of reverse symptoms of a stroke. Man detects an exoplanet with household equipment, some plywood, an Arduino, and normal digital camera. We're finding planets with stuff we can get at a hardware store. How amazing is that? Amazon wins patent for a flying warehouse that will deploy drones to deliver packages in minutes. Two teenage girls built Africa's first ever private satellite. You can now build homes for $5,000. Basic income, we don't have time to go into this. Basically the idea that we just give people money. Like, you live here? All right, here's some money, enough to live off of, go. Seems crazy now, it will not seem crazy in 10, 20 years when unemployment goes up because of automation. Store them in the back of your mind when you heard about it. Unconditional free money, basic income. Films being written entirely by algorithms. 19 year old made a free robot lawyer that's appealed $3 million in parking tickets. Very exciting about that, obviously, lawyers. <laughs> Uh, a TV you can roll up like a newspaper, a robot chef that can cook 2,000 meals at the tap of a button going on, se on sale this year, private chef. A waste shark being released into the Notter Rotterdam port. It's like a water drone that just gobbles up plastic. Om, nom, nom. Right? Think of that for solving lots of problems. Interesting. This one's fascinating. Human translators. Google's within the striking distance of human level translation. Basically like machines, we can, like, I talk to this device, it translates real time fluency level. We're this close. Think of how that brings the world together. Uh, Vision restored the bionic eye, eye drop that dissolves cataracts, regenerating human skin, reversing aging in mammals. And this is my favorite one personally. Researchers found a way to structure sugar, different, uh, uh, structure sugar differently so 40% less sugar can be used without affecting the taste. Going on sale in 2018. Huzzah! <laughs> Love you guys.